Good morning, Kathy. Hang on, you are muted, but I just requested to unmute you, so you should see that. There we go. Oh, I can hear you now, I think. Really? Yes, I hear you. Oh, cool. Perfect. And I was actually just getting to your email with the save chat. I saved it and then I couldn't find it. <laughs> that happens to me all the time. And that's why I just throw everything on my desktop. And then I sort it all later because I'm like, I'm not going to find this folder later on. There we go. Here you go. I'll attach that chat for you. Do, 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 do. What time is it your time? Uh, my time, it is 8.44. And where are you? What? New Brunswick? New Brunswick, yeah. I'd be the same as Nova Scotia in terms of time. What time is it for you? 7.44. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, and it's my son's sixth birthday today. Happy birthday. Yes, Mr. Logan is six years old, which is wild. And what's he going to do? For well, we have... We had a big party planned tomorrow um, at a local off-grid adventure park place, um, but it's pouring right now and it's supposed to pour tomorrow. So we pushed it to next weekend, but we're still going to do something with him tomorrow, maybe go swimming or something. Nice. It's yeah. um, going to supposed to pour here all day today as well. It's just a rainy weekend and the adventure park is really fun. It's got like a outdoor like obstacle course thing and a rock wall and zip line and just really fun for kids especially his age and the price is really good it's a friend of mine who runs it and anyway so we're really looking forward to it but nobody wants to do that in a downpour a little bit of rain is fine like if it was like less than a millimeter or whatever you know we'd, we'd make do but not pouring <laughs> Um, are these sessions that you're recording available to listen to? Because, you know, I never was able to get to the nuclear one on the breakout sessions when there was 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 minutes. Right. The breakout sessions are not recorded. You can't record breakout rooms. But from my understanding, um, there was either a note taker or those um, those lovely people with the cameras are going in and, and collecting that information too. So it will be available. It just won't be available as like a Zoom recording to, to rewatch. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of the, the tricky part about um, recording for Zoom because I was asked to record anything we could mm -hmm. record. Um, and then obviously that information is just not going to go out on, on YouTube, but they're going to use it to pull together notes and ideas and, and all of that fun stuff after the fact, but you can't record breakout sessions. But where the, you know, the, so. When the elder was speaking, that's all recorded. Oh, okay. So nothing yeah. else. Yeah. And then whatever they're doing in person, I imagine they have a means to record that but hybrid hybrid's very difficult to do and very difficult to do well like it's a really good option for people who really can't attend uh, but it isn't it isn't the same feeling <laughs> we're doing yeah. our best but it is it isn't the same feeling and did they figure out a way today to um why it didn't work yesterday why we couldn't access um uh, access the other I, rooms yeah uh, it it would have worked and it did work for a couple of sessions. Just, I don't think they had a device planted in those rooms. Oh. So that was the issue. The issue wasn't, we couldn't do it. It was that, you know, there, there had to be somebody physically in that room with a laptop or a tablet mm -hmm. pointing it at the room so that the virtual participants could participate. So I don't know if the internet connection didn't let them have that many devices or there wasn't that many devices. I'm really not sure. Because they had that many devices for at one point when they did when they did the ten thirty to tw uh, twelve the concurrent discussion sessions. Yes. Okay. Andy's coming on, so that might be a good time to ask. Yeah. 
Look at that beautiful room of beautiful people. <laughs> Yeah, well, I can hear you okay, but it's not as good as when you're in the mic. Can you uh, can you hear me? Yes, I hear that radio voice. Okay. Well, I've got a lot of background noise, so I'm not hearing you well, but uh, yeah, there there is a lot of noise and I yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Sorry, Nicole. How you doing? What's up? Oh, yeah. So I was surprised. Things 
we shift today towards uh, new ways of thinking, new ways of being that uh, it's going to turn, it's going to turn things around, kind of turn things in a new direction. Um, and uh, so the, the format for today is almost exactly the same as yesterday, uh, with a couple exceptions. So uh, at nine o'clock, we'll have uh, we'll a teaching from Elder Joe. Um, then from uh, 9 to 10, and then 10 to 10.30 is a break. 10.30 to noon will be discussion groups, and we'll, we'll give you a heads up what those discussion topics are, where you want to go. Uh, lunch from noon to 1. Then uh, afternoon to 1.30, 1.30 to 3, we'll have that chance to kind of shuffle. Um, and if you want to go to a different discussion topic or topics, you can do that. Um, break from 3 to 3.30, uh, and then 3.30 to 4.30 will be uh, four groups again. Uh, this afternoon, there will be a media scrum that's happening, Bob? Uh, yes, I don't know if there's going to be any media, per se, but... Yeah, so I'm not at 4.30, Bob? Yes. Yeah, so that's kind of like after the core groups. Yes. Yeah. So it's an activity. Yeah. Yeah. Good opportunity. Um, and then uh, I get dinner from uh, I don't know, from, from, from six or six thirty. <coughs> About dinner. Six. Just seven thirty. And then tonight is a kind of a social event. We're gonna do it here. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and um, so let's find how many how many uh, performers do we have in the room? Any singers? I think John Kerberos is bringing a couple of guitars, like not to play, but he's gonna he's gonna. Yodeling, yes, yeah. Any other yodelers in the room? No. Um, so, uh, any guitar players? Yeah? Oh, John. And John? Yeah, yeah I didn't see you. So, you're, you're going to bring a couple of guitars? Yeah, I'll bring a couple of guitars. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, and uh, it could be, could be a lot of fun. Will be a lot of fun. Uh, without uh, further ado, I'm going to uh, welcome uh, Elder Joe up. Joe, Joe, are you going to speak at the, the mic here? Okay. And then once you're done, I'll just I'll move everything down so you can take a seat with the. Uh, and so um, I'll uh, I'll end there with you, Joe. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Um, my prediction to write and Bob will write too. And the see goes and Bob, I see them every day. So we uh, kind of collaborate with uh, our both culture. And that's the subject today. Uh, the two I see. I see something uh, in the animals. And then Bob said they come in every night. So we must bring the new year. So that's part of it. That, this is why I wanted to um, emphasize a lot today on culture, especially the two I see. How do you perceive, how do you see different ethnic cultures? Not just an individual, but a nation. And this morning, I woke up at 3 o'clock, I went downstairs, and Bob said, write something down, it inspired you. The spirits were talking too fast and everything shorthand, and I couldn't make them out, but I wrote it down anyway. And, and, they, and the information I received that morning, the two o'clock in the morning until 4, is tell the truth, tell them what you experienced, and how you experience of the two different cultures and explain the 2IC process. 
And I said, okay, that's what I'll do. And I went back to bed and, and I woke up this morning at seven o'clock. And when I went down to get the coffee, it, it was the, uh, my two IC and experience kind of grew, uh, kind of grew and the seed of uh, discussion was how do I bring it up? Just to, just to, it's just like uh, planting the seed. You watch, you watch, and you don't see none. Then eventually you see the the, uh, the plants coming up, and you see later on, it's kind of like harvest time. Culture awareness and 2IC are pretty well the same. They're the same process of thought. thought. And the subject this morning is like, we're talking about a community or in PEI or, or even here in Nova Scotia, it's a group of people that we're living in a community. And I kind of said, you know, it's like in, introduction to the community was, has to be welcome. But we, we've been doing this, our, our First Nation people, we come out, um, we're not a reserve because of the uh, uh, relocation act. That was an act, that was an this act of parliament. And they, um, a lot of things change in our lives, our lifestyle. And the thing about the two I see in we kept our culture alive and to me uh, i do see a lot of disrespect i see a lot of um because i accept i accept that you know because i mean I'm, I'm looking at their their eyes if the thing that involved in uh, disrespect occurred in a community in First Nations, the 2IC process is to correct it and to adapt and to act upon it here, it would, it would, it would not serve the purpose to correct that. It's just part of their family upbringing or their way their personality and stuff like that. And I found the uh, but I found the other thing too, I found it very respectful that when people are aware and have some knowledge in the 2 I see in process, how I see it compared to how you see it. And the way I, the way I look at it is it's an automatic um, conversion in, in the uh, cultural awareness. When I'm on a First Nations Preserve, the respect for the elders, you know, the elderly people is very high. The respect for the children, because the future is very high. But the, the respect for the elders seems to be very um, solid. <coughs> You don't see children or adults walking in front of an elder. You don't see, they'll stand by the doorway and they'll wait and hold the door or they won't walk ahead of the elder. So that's the two I see in the process of how I, I'm looking at it. When a, a non-indigenous person will, will walk in front of an elder or walk in front of them or step across in, in their pathway. So I'm looking at it, no, don't say nothing. So I'm, I, I take those Aboriginal glasses off, and then I look at it at the, at the uh, settlers or European or the non-indigenous culture. So it's, it's part of the family structure. That's the way it is, and that's the way we all have to accept stuff. The high end of it is when 
the Aboriginals, um, to I see, how I see it is, is totally different from the way you see it. But I have to explain in looking at it through another eyes. Okay, I understand. They're not showing disrespect. It's just the way they are. That's their human behavior. That's how they were there. That's how they were brought up. But the thing you gotta understand is when you do something that may offend a culture, it doesn't have to be Aboriginal. It could be any any culture. They have protocols. They have things that is unusual. But yet the the makeup is is we call respect by being respectful of a, a culture is really important. This is where the lens in, in your vision, the two I see and comes into effect. And there's so many incidents or so many protocols that um, we follow. But I've been following them ever since childhood to my grandfathers, my parents, and my aunts and uncles. It, it's what part of my lifestyle compared to non existent lifestyle. Some of them is similar. Some of them are, yeah, okay. Now, an example would be when I go to a home, I mentioned it before, I go to somebody's house. They say, Bisqua. Bisqua means to come in. And without even asking for tea or is the teapot on or the coffee on, you, you don't even say that. So the vision in the 2IC and in the Aboriginal culture is that if he doesn't offer your tea or coffee, your welcome just became very short. <laughs> it does, it really, it is. Either to go in town or to go in somewhere else or, or, or to kind of busy. But it's not assumption, it's just that it's, it's the culture, it's just the way it is. But if they offer you tea and then uh, you be talking, telling a story, you know, that there, there's time, there's time for that. So if I go to somebody's house, and, and then I take that same components, I take that same teaching or the, the culture, I take and I go to a non-indigenous uh, home, and uh, they will come on in, come on in, you know, so nice to meet you, nice talking. But, but they don't offer tea or coffee. And I'm thinking, okay, I, I gotta take my glasses off and look through their eyes. When I look through their eyes, that is part of their culture, is that they don't, uh, they don't share or they don't offer you tea or coffee. But on a reserve, First Nation community, it would be almost, uh, kind of offensive, but not in a really derogatory way, but it would be uh, real offensive. So having the two cultures and understand the two cultures, two I see them. So if you as in the individuals, the settlers or the Europeans come to a, a reserve and then, you know, come to visit, you know, my, my first thing is, Bisqua, come in. It doesn't say welcome, it means to come in. And when you go in there, they'll, um, you, you may see the person just leave the room. You're sitting there. It's not disrespect. He's prepared uh, making coffee or tea. It, it just, it's part of culture. It's cultural awareness. And, it, and the, the guy's looking around like, okay, where did he go? But sometimes this is where the two eyes seen is now upon the, the settlers or the Europeans. They, they have to put it on. They put their glasses on and they say, okay, 
he's making tea or making toast or whatever. And and that's part of the uh, the culture on, in the two lives. That's just an example. But these are true examples that life experiences you, you learn on first basis <clears throat> instead of having a um, be going on about culture awareness and, and all of a sudden it kind of becomes born and it becomes I don't get it, you know, and but they just follow through, like you know, follow through and then just but the thing about it is this is, these are, are true experience in the two I seen to help explain we look at it differently. We look at culture differently. How we continue from there is it, just a normal thing. It's just that one one five second uh, removing those eyes in a component of an aboriginal. And that's, don't take long, just a split second and you, you have that. And part of that is that the thing that I find is that, I, I guess the best way to explain that is when, when somebody gives you a, a, a gift, because they travel a long ways to your home just to visit you. They travel a long ways, and here's a gift. Or they would give you um, tobacco. Or they give you anything that, that's valued in there from their heart. So they are wearing the glasses, the two eyes seeing of the culture. So the, the respect is there, and in turn, it makes the First Nations or the elders, it, it makes them really comfortable and really good aura, good feeling that, you know, they're following the protocol. It doesn't uh, amaze them, it's just that it, it's really interesting. Part of that becomes the, uh, the teachings. So by the time the day center visit, uh, when a non-native person visits the, the elder or anywhere, uh, the elder will, will most likely return that gift, not the gift that he gave him, but a different type of gift. Something that's close to them, something that's meaningful, because they took their time to visit you. And part of the uh, gift exchange is that just before they're leaving, the elderly person will say, wait a minute, I have something for you. And it gives them like a token of appreciation and gifts, and, and, and that bonds the relationship. So two eyes seen, it, 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 that's just one. But two eyes seen is, is how we view, well, how we, we view the environment. We, we view environment as a uh, life given. We view environment a little different. We're not chemists, we're not uh, biologists, and, and we're not a um, uh, Scientists, we're not, don't have degrees in botany, but yet the, the common knowledge that these elders possess is because of their teachings. Their knowledge comes from their elders, how water is polluted. So it has to come from somewhere. It can be chemicals or erosion of trees. And a lot of sediments from the land start going into water. The two I seen is something that we all should learn. We all should be taught. Look through the eyes of anybody. If we look at when they protest, uh, I, I, you know, when they really protest, 
the empathy, the compassion is there. And all of a sudden, they lose it. They lose the public opinion. They lose the public support. Why is that? It's something that somewhere along the line, the two, the two I see in has been diluted or has been taken off. And what you have is two people looking through the same lens. And when that happens, that's when you, you have violence, you have damage, you have damage to property, and it's, it's negative on negative, force on force. And, and that's where you, somebody has to, one of them has to put the two eyes, two eyes in, into effect. And that's where our environment is suffering right now. We're looking through two lenses, two same, same, same glasses we're wearing. And sometimes the expression, you know, take off your rose colored glasses. They want everything nice, they want everything peaceful. And I heard that so many times that, you know, that person's wearing rose colored glasses. So it's really important that where you have negative and positive working together. And the two I've seen is really, really, uh, I, have, I cannot emphasize so much. Because when I go off the reserve, I go to Katie University, my glasses are, are taken off. And I look at sort of what, the eyes of the students, the teachers, and surrounding area. So I can see what they're thinking. I know, I want to know what their objectives are, what they want me to say, what they want me to do. But when I explain what culture, protocol, and an instinct, the, my glasses are put back on in the Aboriginal overtone or the Aboriginal <coughs> teaching. But when the student asked me a question, I take those glasses off in my mind. And I said, well, okay, this is, what he, this is what they're asking me. Because I understand what their point is. Why is it, why, why, why are they asking that question? So I understand more. But if I kept my Aboriginal eyes on, my glasses, I, I may, become very um, defensive. I maybe become um, close-minded. And that's not a very good thing. But it's not a good thing because you become resilient or become very uh, defensive. You know, everybody has a, a opinion because everybody don't understand what is what is culture awareness? How do we place? Why is the world it is now? Why is it? It's world power. It's about economics. It's about money. And the thing about that, our people, the uh, the Mi'kmaq, have lived in a community. Yes, they were forced on the community to reserves, but they lived in different forty <coughs> counties of European. They, they had encampments for a group would move in their summer homes, where they moved out in the winter time. They moved inland, but they were communes. They get together and and, and survive. They have them today, not the First Nation communities, but they have other groups that are existing today. <coughs> and, and they're all over the world. They got them over in Newfoundland. They got them in PEI, Nova Scotia. Unless you go there and put their 
classes on how they work, their spirituality, their culture, and understand what they're doing, how they do it, and why. And, it's, and if you learn more to, to respect that individual. It's, our, it's like our youth. Our youth don't walk in front of other elders. There's always respect. But those things are really interesting. You know, no question at the uh, Mennonites. I went there one day and, and nobody talked to me. I, I, I looked at it as okay, that's okay. You know, they, they have their, their, their vision and I, understand, I respected that. But eventually just, they called him a head man or head chief. And he asked me what I want. I said, I, I want to know what's your culture. I want to, and he said, we're busy right now, but come back later. But they didn't know because I was in, in a position of a, uh, enforcement. They see me in uniform. And, and I thought about it, I said, holy shit. You know, maybe they were threatened by the uniform or, or the, uh, the car I was driving with the lights on there. So I said, no. I'll, I'll, I'll leave them be. So part of that is two I see. I looked in through their eyes and said, there's authority here. You know, maybe I, maybe I should have been in my private car, civil, civilian code, something like that. But I was there. And the same thing over PEI, same uh, on the uh, other rights, you know. And I, and I attended a lot of uh, different religious sectors, like uh, the Buddhist, the, the mosque, and then all those different religious. And when I do that, I, I take my Aboriginal glasses off and I adapt it to two I see to understand, to listen of their belief, the higher power, or the belief of their social structures. Their spirituality, and I think that's when you when you un, when you understand that a little bit more, it, it makes your life <coughs> and their life compatible. I never knew until I went over to Europe that the the plugins are different. Hmm. I really didn't know. Yeah, you know, I had you know, how am I charge my phone? And the fact that it didn't work. That's the two I see in principle. When I know now that I had to buy a, a different adapter, and that's what adapter to me is a uh, lifestyle. When I bought a different adapter to charge my phone, it worked. I didn't get mad at the, uh, the plug in, but that's the way it is. That's the way of life. So adapters is part of that. And the same thing earlier I talked about is keys. When you lose your keys, you lose your thought and the key elements. So the adapter is, is one way that we can look at the uh, a different capital. You can use that as a two I see and teach how we perceive. How do we get along? How do we walk in togetherness or in sequence? But our culture is always with us. Your culture, my culture, everybody's culture and their belief is always there. And I think that's what happens to our people. They try to remove their culture, our culture into adaptation of the European way of um, doing things. And what it did, it really hurt a culture. But our culture in Aboriginal side uh, survived because we adapted. We adapted to today's society from the 30s, 40s, and 50s, 60s, 70s, and so on. 
I cannot see anybody on the First Nation Reserve saying no to a uh, internet or cell phone or vehicle or way of life. It, it would does not make sense because they have they adapted for that way of lifestyle. It would be very hard for anybody to start living in the old way, the old because it's, it, 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 it would be uh, humanly um, impossible. But they take the same traditional values and, and, and uh, lifestyle of the way they were respected by our ancestors. I have a TP. I have to fire in there. But yet, I, I live 30, 30 yards away. I, I live in a house has furnace, bathroom, and all this stuff here. So I take those two cultures and I put them together. But I also take the economics and the uh, things like, even on a reserve in, in the teepee, you know, I'm, I'm wearing a non-indigenous glasses because I'm, I want to teach culture awareness to non-native people. Then when I do the actual ceremonies, the actual teaching, I take those glasses off and I act on the protocol, the ceremonies, the things that we do to teach. And part of that is really interesting because when, when you really get into it, it, it's easier to teach somebody when they understand and when they show respect and answer the questions. And the best question is, don't beat around the bush. You know, why is it this way? Why did they make reserve? Why did they put you on a reserve? Why did they took your language away? You know, a lot of questions like that. Catholicism is powerful. You know, religion is powerful. But you have, you have to understand and our, our people too, you know, they, they become in the, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, over generations, generations, like six, seven generations. And it, it becomes a uh, mental state. It becomes a uh, physical state. And when the thing about that is nobody realizes that there was a Stockholm syndrome effect. Somebody took our glasses off. Somebody hit our glasses, hit our culture. So when they did that, we sort of went blind. It's almost like the empathy of a, uh, a deer in headlights. Boom, you know, like I can't move. We're being controlled until they blink and understand. And that's what's happening now. A lot of First Nations elders have suffered, have suffered mentally, physically, emotionally. And now they're starting to put their glasses back on. They're putting on their glasses and seeing who they are as an Aboriginal. But they also had their glasses on before the way it is. The European way of living. So right now they live in both worlds. By living in both worlds, they, they automatically know how and when to take their glasses off, when to put the Aboriginal glasses on to I see in the process. Those things are really entrenched in our society. And now that we still live on reserve. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But one day I was curious. Because the young generations are not aware of the residential school, the centralization, the Indian Act, and all this stuff. They, they don't. Because the part of this education system doesn't teach them that. But they don't teach them the what what's called. What was Tatabu's call? What was 
those different areas. Where would, you know, they don't teach them the, their words. You know, even, even uh, hammers. Hammers is not, there's no Mi'kmaq word for hammers. Hammers was a general from uh, England. Same thing with Halifax. He was in World Trade, Lord, Lord of Halifax. So those things, and, and, but they say Jabukruk. So Jabukruk means head of the bay. It doesn't mean Halifax, but it means head of the bay. It comes down. So, but that adaptation in language and because of our younger people, are, are you going to the uh, Jabukruk? Oh, you want Halifax? Yeah, okay. Acceptance is part of the language, linguistic way. Right? So anyway, but me, that's what it means. Headed a bay. Even when we go by uh, Stuyak, you know, by, by Stuyak, you see those big um, uh, mastodon on the side there. You know, that, that's that's a that's a real Mi'kmaq word, the uh, Stuyak. But they uh, they shortened the version because. The European couldn't pronounce Sedewak. Uh, it, it means shift in sand. So Stuyak means shift in sand. That's what it means because the tidal water comes in and moves it around. You know? So a lot of things, those things are, are not taught in the school. The logistics of our language has to be taught. So it's the two I see in aspect put on there. So one day I asked my granddaughter, Dus. Dus means like honey or deer or affective, you know, or a loved one. I said, Dus, should there be reserves? Without even thinking about it. Not even, well, well uh, like that. He just, no, there should, no be, should not be no reserve. We become too, we, the, uh, the people have become so assimilated in living in the community. And she said, drop the subject right there. And I was thinking, a little girl's 10 years old, and she just told me there should be no reserve. As a whole, you know, that, that's a, that's the, uh, to her it wasn't a power statement, but to me, Hearing something like that, but because I was wearing those, um, I had the other glasses on. I was accustomed to it. I was, I lived. My grandfather, my grandmother lived on the reserve, so I became very entrenched in that same thought that I'm, I'm not allowed to leave the reserve, even under the Indian Act. That if somebody moved out of the reserve, they lost their status. That's true. They, they lost their status. They wouldn't get no financial. So the dependence on the community has changed over years. And even when, even when you're given a, uh, like none of those houses are, are owned by community members. They're, they're owned by the band. So the two I see in is being honored, but as far as the Aboriginal two I see in part of it is that my 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 boy, the youngest one, lives with me. It's going to be on East House. I don't have a will, but the two I see in has to have a will, making sure that when you go to the spirit world. These are your wishes. On the Aboriginal side, your will is verbal and it will be honored. That's when you put on the, the other classes. They respect that. So there's a lot of things that we have to learn about 2IC. I'm only touching what the Titanic should have seen. Should have seen more ice. And the Titanic is the same principle as that. We want to top up the the, uh, the iceberg. What's below is more important. And two ice is really 
culture awareness. Culture awareness covers many different uh, diverse groups. Just alone in Nova Scotia, the last time I thought about it, or did a survey on it, there was over 72 different ethnic groups. Like different like communities, different 72 different <coughs> diverse groups. I mean that's a lot. But look at the diverse group that came over on the Mayflower, Mayflower flower, the Nina, Katina, and the first encounters of the Europeans. Can you imagine the different culture shock was here, the language, the political structure. The two I seen probably started right there and then when with the first encounters of the Europeans. But they didn't put on our glasses. They never seen it through our eyes. It was through domination, suppression. And it's the way it is. They never looked at our political structure, our health care. They never looked at land based. We're part of the land. We share. They never looked at that. All they thought about is resource, conference, and go on to the next country. And this is happens throughout North America. It happened out through. West Indies, and, and this goes on. You got two groups of government, which were French and France, France and uh, England, but other countries were partners with them. So the two I see is very important in our, in our culture. Because sometimes we'll, we'll, when we talk, when I was in the uh, in the house, I take my glasses off, Aboriginal glasses off, and I listen to my new friends up there, hear them. Then when I'm they finish listening, and I put my other glasses on, I don't show no opinions or any conversation. With it, but that's the learning process. That's the protocol how we get along. If I start going up there and and, and start to be uh, opinionated or what became to be like, well, no, no, you're wrong right there. That's not right, you know. It, it, it's not a way to start a relationship. <coughs> the relationship comes in understanding. The relationship comes in respect and understand that each of us have of each other by understanding your culture, by understanding my culture, you know, we, we have became what you call, even today's botany is called hybrid. We have two different plants <coughs> from one seed. And I can, you know, to me, I think we all can live in harmony, peace, and tranquility when we develop that hybrid relationship. And we understand more about the environment, why the waters are polluted, why are we in a, a nuclear um, state of affairs. The nuclear state of affairs has been going on for a long, long time. It's been going on way before the dropping of the bomb in Hiroshima. It happened way before that. But they were called cannonballs, <laughs> you know. Those things are really destructive. But those things are, it, it's, an, it's the um, mind blowing how the process of the, uh, how we, we, we try to hurt each other. But we try to hurt Mother Earth. And Mother Earth is saying, all right guys, I think I had enough of your abuse. It's time for you to pay the fiddler, so to speak. And, and Mother Earth will say, no, 
you guys stop fighting. If, if we don't stop fighting, I'm going to show floods, global warming. If you don't stop fighting, there's going to be fires. If you don't stop fighting, I'm not going to give you any more water. So Mother Earth is mad. Mother Earth is angry. And how we could clean up our own acts by working together. But we need that sympathetic ear. Or we need that individual, people in power of influence to say, put these on. Put, put these glasses on for a minute. You don't have to keep them on, but put them on for a minute so you can see your objective. And I think that's when we, with the two negatives, you, you just can't do it, but you're going to have a positive and negative. And when they cross over, positive things happen. And effects are really, even the language, the cause and effect, you know, those things are really important how we develop understanding. But Mother Earth is angry. Mother Earth is hurting because of all the chemicals that we put in there. It affects all species of fish. And it also affects all the animals that eat off the grass, the apples, or whatever, it affects them. I think we could, in a nice way, tell them the powers to be, where, how come we don't listen to, how come we don't listen to the Aboriginal mythology, or the Aboriginal components? They've been here thousands and thousands of years, and, and they didn't, but but that's a time frame. That's a we didn't we didn't have um, radiation. We didn't have all those powers. We eventually, be honest with you, we would eventually advance into a, a different state of affairs. But because of one act of uh, spirituality was taken away. Because one act of somebody not wearing the glasses affected our lifestyle, our culture. And that's the two I seen. It all reversed back to the two I seen. If that wasn't interfered, I think our lifestyle would have been a lot different. It would, I would have been living in RR1 Indian Brook. I would have lived, lived in RR4 Windsor. Or whatever. But I still would have to maintain my Aboriginal background or heritage. And I think that's so important. But it just happened that way. It didn't happen that way. We are who we are. And we will survive again. We will survive what's taken place. And I think the teachings from our elders will help our children, our grandchildren, to understand. And that's part of our teachings when it comes to 2IC. It's showing the circles coming around. It's to show respect and understanding of culture. I put on a t-shirt this morning, but it's too cold. I was going to show off with it. Was. But anyway, uh, but anyway, it's there. But that's there because you guys are wearing the two I see. You don't see it, right? But if I took it off and I said, and, I, and then, then you're going to see me ask who I am. So I'm putting on, you guys are going to be wearing the two I see in now. This is part of the teaching, right? Because you're going to see me. We're all going to be looking at it through the hybrid and all. So this is the European eyes I took. I was wearing that. And you guys are wearing it. Now, 
Here we are. How? So I'm, I'm an Aboriginal, and then you guys are looking at me, and and to what I see in aspect now, how culture, how we get along, how we show respect, that we don't walk in front of the elders. We always help the elders. Prime example this morning, Don said, you want coffee? I said, yes. But she asked me for the coffee. I didn't say, Don, can you give me coffee? And that's part of the culture awareness on the, uh, the protocol. The younger people are starting to lose that. But the next, gen the next generation is starting to return those, those um, culture awareness. And part of that is I received a gift this morning. Up in, you know, I said, I said, a woman walking by. I said, I'm part of nature. You don't even see me. And she looked around and she came over and, 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 she, and she gave me a gift. Before the day's end, I will return that gift. Not to get a gift that she gave me, but I'll return it. But that's because of our cultural awareness in respecting for each other. She don't know when she's going to get it, but she will get it for the day's end. For the sun time. And that's probably when we when we do the uh, ceremonies, when I did the, uh, uh, the four directions, all of my grandfather. That's the two I see in teaching. Because we're calling our ancestors and your ancestors. So it goes way beyond the, the, uh, the, the smudging, you know, when we smudge, when I smudge you. That's two I see in teaching. You're learning about that. You're learning about why you want to clear your mind, your ears, so you can listen. Those are the two I see. In. Why? Why is he doing that? Because you want to listen more, speak less, but open your heart. So two I see is part of that teaching. Somebody may come up here and say something. But the same principle as the two I see is where it's a different way of teaching. There are many elders that they do the smudging, they do the talk, but their methods are a little different. They may sharpen it, they may be very they and they may and they may be very direct. And when they're very direct, these elders are you know, you better you better pay attention when, it, when they're very, very direct. They don't beat around the bush. They don't explain themselves. No, people shouldn't be throwing stuff in there. Okay. They're very, very direct. And that's part of the elders teaching. Every elder has different ways of teaching to philosophy, the way we do things especially how we could work together. There's many ways of our ways that are being, especially our, our elders who, who have the knowledge to teach it. And they're being, it's just being passed on to the next generation, like my helper over there. He's white, Caucasian. But if I don't teach them and put on the two I see, glasses he wears, <coughs> he wouldn't understand me. He wouldn't understand any of the courses that he's being taught in political science, Aboriginal governance. He might be the next, he might be the next uh, Indian Affairs Minister. I don't know. He might be the next person in charge, a minister, environment. That's him to choose. That's his life. And we only can nurture those individuals and, and teach them. The same as our kids, our children, our grandchildren. So the two I see in is not just trying to frame something and trying this. It goes beyond social acceptance, um, social training, and it goes beyond that. It's really 
the experience of it's a daily thing of how we perceive, how you perceive. And there's some people, I'll be honest with you, there's some people really close minds. But these people are really danger, pe dangerous people. They're the fascist people. They're, they're the ones that, that are really uh, and those people will end up losing more of what they're trying to gain. They lose a lot of things. And that through these, these people that are suffered more. They may enjoy the pleasures, they may enjoy the, the wealth, but eventually they have to pay the bitter, so to speak. They will pay dearly. And that's my time. So I'm going to break for a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, it's good to know about you. Anytime you have any questions, stuff like that, I'm, 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 I'm open, you know, and I just sit back and, and listen. That's why, you know, I, I like roaming around and I like, you know, talking to people. And I do carry on, and I'm hoping that my helper smarter than me. Because I'm learning everything that he has learned. Because he will learn a lot more. But right now he's 50%. But anyway, no, that's good though. We do think about that. I, I find I find laughter in, in medicine is like um, it's as medicine. Laughter to me is when when you a young person falls down and gets hurt. You know, the more empathy, oh, don't, oh, is it hurt? Is it going that? You know, it, it makes the child more painful. It's almost like very painful. But they say, no, you're all right, little girl. You know, you're all right. You know, it ain't going to hurt. It, 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 it heals them. It still hurts like hell. But it, it's, it smooths their thing. And it kind of, kind of changes the subject and takes away the pain. But well, that's part of the CT number two, I see. So anyway, how are we doing? Well, well, I'm, I'm just wondering, Joe, in the, uh, we're coming up to 10, but we have, a, we have some time. Wondering if you'd be OK with taking some questions from the from the, the group here. Sure. Yeah. Any, anybody have a question for Joe they'd like to, like to share? Yeah. And Joe, could I, just for the folks who are online, if you could repeat the question. Before you answer, just so they know what you're okay. speaking. Thanks. Um, thank you so much, Joe, for sharing your perspective here. Um, so preserving natural areas is very important for a lot of reasons, but the, the Western way of doing this is really just kind of focused on blocking off these natural areas and um, preventing humans from using it which really separates people from the land and nature. And so I'm wondering what role you have seen has in um, preserving natural areas, but also um, allowing us to, to live and experience nature and be more like, become stewards of it rather than just separating humans from nature. <coughs> So in, in essence, the, uh, the question was uh, um, interesting, and it, it is, it's also very interesting that you answered your own question. <laughs> you get so partly, yes. Yeah. But if you would, told, I told you earlier, be direct. You're not going to offend anybody here. You're definitely not going to offend me. Because I, I understand a lot of these questions that, that come out. And that's part of. Oh, okay, just a second. I'm getting tired here. Okay. There you go. Sorry, Ask, ask the question to me, but direct. Don't beat around the bush. <laughs> so, 
put up, put on your uh, one of those glasses. I don't know which one you want to wear, <laughs> but put on the environmental glasses. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but so say we we need to <laughs> conserve a lot of forests. Um, and for example, <laughs> my um, is very western based, and I think the most effective way might be to just say, okay, this area humans can't use because. We, the way we live, we often end up um, harming and destroying the nature we're part of. Um, but we know that this is not the way humans have to live. <coughs> and so I'm wondering um, how we incorporate 2 i zine into our conservation methods. Um, do you think that's Possible. Oh, it's 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 all in po it's possible for anything in when you in the uh, two I seen concept. <coughs> and things that we want to we want to have inhabitants and stuff like that. I, I think uh, some people, um, the government or government officials. Have recognized that, and by recognizing that, they, they created national parks. They created because of the um, long-lasting uh, habitats there, stuff like that. So that they're national parks. So they are trying to preserve. But the only thing that I would think is. Um, the argument would be, <laughs> the argument I would have is how would, why would you flood and have, where it's being used by the, uh, the Aboriginals or the Indigenous people? And it boils down to uh, monetary economic money. You know, it, becomes, it comes down to individual. Um, selling up their land and stuff like that become a corporate and it's, it's the same thing with um you know what i asked the question like i'm i'll answer your question but i want you to think about this and and i want you to put on two i saying but which one you want to put on uh so what's the difference between spirituality and religion you know what is the difference you know and if those concepts but they're the same. No, they're not the same. They're different. So the concept is really important. How you ask the question, you're asking question where um, it's stored up the land. You know. I think the study should be what's going to impact on the on the area. How big impact was it before they made? Uh, National Park, one is up in that part of Jasper. They got three or four of them in, in Nova Scotia, National Park, federal, in the reserves, <coughs> where, where nobody's allowed to harvest, nobody's allowed to, to hunt, nobody's allowed to, uh, to enter in there. It, it's a safe environment for the environment. And land ownership is very important when we uh, have possession. Aboriginals never had possessional land. We weren't, we didn't, we weren't landowners. We just lived with the land and we respect the land, respect the environment. So the environment is, is not upset with us. It gives us what we want. When we, the non indigenous the other glasses on now, when we take and take and take, the environment says there's no more to be taken. And that affected the ecology center or the ecology of a, 
of a species. Teach us less cotton on in Nova Scotia to the monetary, uh, we have to cut it off until the stock's rebuilt. The salmon is the same thing. The salmon stock is low. But what effect did it take? What, what effect did it, it took before it was recognizable? Why would why did it take so long? In, in an Aboriginal component, it's like if I'm going fishing for salmon, I take it not to sustain my family or, or like that, or or have one or two for a feast. But if I go in there and with a net and take three, four hundred salmon. It's the future of the stock of the salmon. I just took away more than I need. And that's what the industry does. It takes more of what they need. It becomes a demand. It becomes a economy. So take only what you need and then the future generations. So my grandchildren and their grandchildren will have a, a feast of salmon instead of having to wait 15 or 20 years for the stock to increase. And the same thing with the, uh, the stewards of land and, and where uh, certain land is going to be. You know. At what point? That's where, that's where the question would be, the 2IC question would be. I'm, I'm looking at it to that. At what point will you, will they understand? Hope that understands a little bit. Or, <coughs> but I mean, the question is just go right to the go right to the point. Don't don't, don't beat around the bush. Because I'll, I'll probably dance around and, and tell the music stops. Eh? <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a question over here. Nancy. Um, yeah, I was just going to ask you. Um, you know, I read a book called Braiding Sweetgrass, and it was about an Aboriginal lady who was educated in biology. So she wrote a whole book on, on um, well, conservation from two points of view. Anyway, I was wondering, have you ever recommended that book? Because I think for many um, settlers, for like me, people like me, it was really moving. And I think explaining in more detail what you've been saying. And I, and I think that, that's a really good point. See, I'm only, I, 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 mentioned, <coughs> I mentioned that I'm only touching the tip of the iceberg in, in order for me to explain more about 2 ic it, it would take, it would take uh, a session, it would take a workshop to fully understand the concept of what is 2IC. I'm just trying to, I don't have an hour to really talk about a lifetime. I don't have a certain amount of time um, to really explain how, <clears throat> as an Aboriginal, what is the 2IC. And I think by um, reading on on the, uh, the rated street graph, two rated street graph, it, it would be it would be very nice if everybody would read it. It would be very nice that any any authors that's written by uh, First Nation should be uh, in the education system. You know, probably they, they they mark it down as fictional, but actuality it is the truth, and it is, it's just an editorial thing. You know, it's easier for them to say fiction. Then true because they have the copyrights and they have to go see that person and that person. So it's really interesting how um, how that prevents that person. Is this true, really? You know, really, it's a fictional. It's no no different than, than watching a movie on TV. They're all fictional, but the reality of of some of those shows, like and and I told my wife, yeah, that's that's what took place out there. You know the things that that occur in the crime world, but it's a story, but it's fictional, right? So 
I, I recommend anybody that, that uh, have an opportunity to read an, a, an author by uh, Aboriginal <laughs> people, by all means, look at it, read it, and just think about it. And that's part of the, the, the two I see, and it gives you a better concept <clears throat> of what what's out there. Have time for one or two more questions? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I have a question about the two I seen and how it applies in the context that uh, you talked about the 72 different ethnicities in what said the Halifax area and how many cultures really we encounter every day, right? And but my concern is to apply to, to when we adapt too much, do we challenge enough? Because there is a dominant culture, and the rest of us are all these other 72 things are really dominated cultures by this dominant one. And 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 sometimes it's hard to 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 get through some things that are viewed as being the way or the one way to do things. And um, when so, so my question to you is when we the, the, the respect is very important, but it means different things to different people, and uh, and it's a it's a two way street. It doesn't really help if I'm very respectful of your ways and you're not respectful of my ways. Me, you being the dominant culture, which we all have to navigate, uh, coming from a variety of cultures, and and when. What is what is the answer? I, I wasn't in a meeting the other day, but I was in a meeting to um, re to rewrite the constitution of a political party, and there was a commission struck to do that. And then there, there was this discussion about the rules that were going to use for this meeting. And then I was saying the Robert rules. Well, and I said, well, okay, why why these Robert rules? It's all kinds of different ways to. To, to run these things. And then it's another the problem is because they are the rules. But of course, this is the dominant culture speaking, and I'm saying, okay, but why do you think their rules are the rules of some American guy from the army wrote in the 70s, and these are the only rules? Uh, because where I'm from, we never heard of these rubber rules, and we had all kinds of other ways to, to have conversations. And then they talk about lean speech, but not which means you get to the point and then next. But then this lean speech idea is not all these different cultures not necessarily have the same ways of knowing or we don't go about things the same way. And But there is a dominant one. And, and going back to the original question, about the two ways saying when we adapt too much, is it possible that we don't challenge enough and then if there is not enough change or evolution within this dominant culture? It's a question. Good. Yeah. And by the way, in my culture, we not only uh, give coffee or tea to the people who visit, but we try to feed them. And sometimes there is hot chilies, too many <laughs> in food. And, and that could be that sometimes, you know, it, it causes uh, cultural differences. But anyway. <laughs> yes. What do you think about this? The dominant culture, you want to, you want to 
you want to listen to them. You want to respect them. If they're dominant culture over you, then you just you just gave up. You just surrendered. You gave up all powers to them if you want to let them to be dominant. Our people never gave up and, and never took their dominance. <clears throat> we kept our rights, our culture. We never surrendered any land. The two dominant cultures that came on the shores here were fighting long before they arrived here. They fought for what? They fought for religion. They fought for nominations in different groups. But when they came here, we, we didn't give it up. We didn't sign no surrender. But the two eyes seeing has helped our people. You two people have fought, France and England fought. France lost, but they were, <coughs> they were allies to the Greek mob. But that's because they were the first encounters. What happened if England was the first encounters with the Greek mob? Same results. The dominance is, if you want to give it up, you will give it up. And our culture is, they never gave it up. We never surrendered land. We never surrendered anything. As a matter of fact, we entrench our treaty rights. That's why we, we have a treaty of peace and friendship. Most of the uh, acknowledgement in the when they do acknowledgement, they say peace and friendship. We're all treaty people. By showing that we're all treaty people, I respect the crown. I respect everybody. And then when they dominate another country, they dominate it by allowing them to be dominated. The culture, the history has been written. The things that are there are there. You cannot go back and change it. You might change the rules, you might change the mandate, you may change the policy, or try. <clears throat> we don't have to change that. Our people have thrived, they worked in harmony. They work with everybody. They have a political structure that's maintained through the theory and practical of the elders of the, the Grand Council. Everybody speaks in a circle. And the respect for the chief is high. And I think that's where we still kept our culture. We still kept our Aboriginal to ICM. But when they talk to the government officials and stuff, this is where they take their glasses off and put on the European lens, so to speak. So they could relate to them, they could talk to them. So dominant is, is a fact that it has dominated other parts of the world, whether it be uh, anywhere. And that's when you get into a position where, where there's uh, rebellion, where there's uh, fighting, where there's protest in, in, in the environment, anything like that. I think the, the lesson here is that if you want to be dominated, you will be dominated. Simple as that. And it's part of human behavior. 
if you want to buy dog to come in, then I wouldn't. Personally speaking, I don't bow down to nobody. I understand them more. But to me, I'll only bow down as if it's, if it's a culture. And, and the bowing down, is, is, to me, the culture is it's like over in Asia. The, the Japanese or Chinese, they bow. But, but they bow to show respect. It's in like Tibet, the monks, they bow down. Or they have some form of peace and harmony. Buddha bless you. Yeah. Those are respectful religions. They're and more they, peaceful. Yeah. Peaceful, yeah. Yeah. In and, my and culture, I, your, your domination, you're supposed to fight it until you die. <laughs> and that's a different culture. That's another two way thing. And sometimes I find myself finding uh, difficult this idea of adapting too much. Or, yeah. <clears throat> you see the history of Latin America is like this, you know, I, the dominator and revolution. So. Thank you so much. It's very, very interesting. I, it's, this idea of the two way scene really helped us all because so many different ways of knowing and feeling and sensing or interpreting things and we have to all understand each other. Thank you. Thank you. How are we doing both? Yeah. Thank you. Um, tomorrow night, or is it tonight the uh, talent thing? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, Hello, Johnny Cash. <laughs> my my uh, my partner my my partner I didn't mean it like that don't take it literally um, my helper uh, will be singing a song tonight and and the, and the uh, thing about dad he does a really good Elvis Presley impression <laughs> part of the talent in Acadia I I seen him I heard him and it's really remarkable how he does Elvis Presley and he does uh, Buddy Holly pretty. Uh, well, I'm looking forward to tonight and hearing it. This is the first time I'm learning of this. I, I, I just don't push it. I can't wait. I, <laughs> I think Joe's your backup singer, though. I love yeah. yeah. Well, thank right, you, guys. So, for listening. Daniel, sounds like you're on the hook. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, um, like Maria said, I think on behalf of all of us, we really want to thank you all. I remember uh, what you said about the smudge ceremony. Open your ears, open your heart, and speak less as we waited for two white scene. Um, we're going to slide the schedule 15 minutes. Um, so, what is it, about quarter after now, I yeah. think? So, everything's going to kind of shift. Uh, 15 minutes, we'll let the online people know that. And I think, Andy, you wanted to go through. Yeah, yeah I'll walk you through. All right. Okay. 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 So, um, just a, a, just some in, in uh, descriptions before we get into the discussion groups. So, the discussion groups will start at uh, at ten forty-five, so about fifteen minutes late. Uh, but we're going to let the the, the 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 discussion leaders tell you a little bit about what their sessions are uh, before we break, so you have a set a better sense of where do you want to go. But I will let you know where they're going to happen. So, um, in the lobster factory. Uh, it will be uh, Phil and Justin. And so why don't we just start with, with you both kind of providing a little bit of description of what your respective sessions will be, and then I'll go on to the other ones. So maybe start with you, Justin. Sure. Uh, 
we're talking about food sovereignty during the great turning. Uh, try to take some of the sadness and doom and gloom from yesterday and turn it into some pragmatic food focused solutions. Uh, digging into local food systems and uh, alternatives to industrial food production uh, and what that might all might mean as we get into the new one. Uh, so, you know, anything's on the table, I'll frame it up in a bit more detail than that. But food sovereignty is fun. So, Justin Cantapia with uh, Local Food Sovereignty, and then um, uh, Phil is going to provide a lead a discussion about um, ramp conservation communities. So, maybe you can tell us a bit about that, Phil. Sure. Um, yeah, I've got a short presentation that will hopefully lead into uh, some discussion about how we can uh, sort of marry the two concerns about community development, population increase, as well as preserving farmland and making it accessible to uh, young people. Um, so I was, uh, I had the opportunity to, to visit a number of uh, farm conservation communities and have some examples of others that I haven't visited, but just aware of. So uh, yeah, I'll just uh, present those ideas and then uh, hopefully have a good discussion about how we might be able to do something like that in Atlanta. Yeah. That's great, Thank, thanks so much. And we'll probably, have, we'll, if you've got a presentation, so maybe we'll have you you, you come up and do sure. your, your discussion from here and Justin will be back. So uh, this, I'm just guessing that this is where Lil's going to choose to come for her discussion group. Am I right that? Yeah. yeah? Um, all right. Um, then in the, the Thinker's Lodge, we'll have um, actually two, two leaders coming in from uh, via Zoom. So uh, Regan Rosberg will be doing the role uh, of art in the Great Turning, and I'll just give you a just read from the description here to see how an understanding of what that's about. She'll be uh, leading a discussion of how, how art reaches a wide, uh, a wide audience and creates opportunities for connection, empathy, diverse perspectives, and emotional processing. So that's the first one that'll be in, in Thinker's Lodge. Uh, the second one that'll be in the Thinker's Lodge will be uh, Gregory Hemming. So Greg's good to go, yeah? So he'll be doing a uh, leading discussion on called Seeking Common Ground spirit, nature, and an ecological economic. Uh, and I'll read the description here. There are moments in our lives, moments in our history, when it is useful, even necessary, to take part in a very ancient, practical, and spiritual tradition, withdrawing from the fray. Now is the time to give ourselves and our families the time and space to find the moral clarity to either face or avoid certain ecological and, and uh, or avoid certain ecological and societal collapse. <laughs> If we do not begin an immediate shift away from our current economic system of endless growth and consumption and advance toward a steady state economy with stabilized population and consumption, we are facing certain collapse. The shift away from neocapitalism and towards an ecological economics will require a deep and abiding commitment to, to live simply, to care deeply, and to fully embrace the notion that all life on Earth is interconnected. So Gregory will be leading that discussion. Um, he'll be coming in via Zoom, and this, again, the session will be in uh, Thinker's Lodge. And then finally, uh, Bob's going to be leading another session today, and I'll let you describe that one, Bob. Okay, so I'm a stand-in for Joan Baxter. Uh, she wanted to do one on the role of media in the great turning. She's gotten caught up in some tight deadlines and sent her regrets, so she won't be able to do it. She's obviously much more qualified, uh, particularly with the of quality of work that she generates. Um, so I'm the poor stand-in. Um, talk about media, I know a little bit. It's a big hairy gorilla, I think, as everybody knows, and we'll weave our way through it uh, to make a discussion. So Bob, leading a discussion of a big hairy gorilla is in <laughs> the Thinker's Lodge. Uh, or the role of media in the great unraveling and great turning. So um, uh, we'll take uh, about 20 minutes to get things all set up. Uh, more or less, depending on how the, if the internet, uh, <coughs> the internet uh, cooperates.
So you're online, we're good. I'm kind of online. Oh, that's awesome. okay. Uh, yeah, so this one presents. Yeah. Yeah, well, you're going to just hit present there. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that was fine. Um, yeah, um, I'm going to. Uh, now, the only issue, this is a Chromebook, so when you, when you share your screen, what you'll see on screen is just your presentation. You won't see the individual. Is anyone online watching? So if they want to ask you a question, I'm going to speak up. You won't see the written version while you present. This part is Yes, you know, yes, yes. What's the best way to write to I'm going to you can start saying there's much more to the
Hello, everybody who's still in the main session here. I have opened the breakout rooms. So if you know which room that you'd like to go to, you can go to them manually. Or if you just want to let me uh, know in the chat, I can put you to whichever room you'd like. And I see there's a couple of new people here. So I'm going to copy and paste the descriptions in the chat so you can take a peek at which room you'd like. Um, none of the sessions have started yet, but there are people in the sessions hanging out until we get started. So if you have any questions, just send them to me in the chat. In the meantime, I'm going to copy and paste uh, the descriptions in the chat for you. And I will be jumping out of this main room just for a second to go check on one of the other groups, but I will be right back. Have the uh, breakout room started? Does anyone know? Because I jumped into one and no one was around. No one around. No one's here either. Spooky. Spooky beans. All right. Well, I'll jump back in the room. I'll see if anyone's no, there. I'm, Matt, Matt, I'm here, but I just don't know how to get out of this. This is, seems to be the big room. I'm trying to get oh. to a breakout room. How do I get there? Okay. So down at the bottom of your Zoom screen, there should be three buttons with more. It says the word more. It's like three little dots. Yeah, I'm familiar with that as an indication, but I don't have that. I got breakout. Oh, there's breakout rooms, I guess. Yeah, Just and then you breakout click. Rooms? Yeah, and then you click which one you want from that. Ah, all right. That makes it simple. All right. Thanks much. Hey, no worries. Which one did you go to? I'm going to the local food sovereignty because I'm a big foodie nerd. I love talking about food. <laughs> I want to see if I can find some other foodie nerds. So you hit the join button and then you just wait? Yeah, you hit the join button and yeah. then it should take you to a completely different screen. Right. So I'm going to hit join right now and I should just disappear. Let's see. All right. Let's see. Hello, folks. I'm back if you need anything. Okay. Please. Perfect. Rick, where would you like to go? Okay. I think Rick, uh, Rick is in the process of moving. Richard, can I help you with anything?
All right, Richard, I'm not sure if you're there, but if you want, you can leave me a message in the chat or you can unmute yourself. Um, I think for the time being, though, just to make sure you get to at least somewhere, I'm going to assign you to a group, but you can always leave that group and you can come back to this main group, uh, main room and we'll put you back somewhere. So let's assign you, I know Reagan's there, the role of art. There. So you're able to join that group if you like, but if that isn't the group that you want to go to, just let me know in the chat or you unmute yourself and we'll get you to where you need to go. Hello, hello. Good evening. Hello. <laughs> it is me. Um, I believe you were hanging out in local food group, correct? Yep. No one's there. No one's there yet. Okay. That is supposed to be Justin. So yeah. I am not sure where Justin is, but I did overhear Andy saying that um, Justin was going to have a virtual component to his group. So maybe what I'll do, if it's okay with you, is I'll throw you in. Oh, here's Robert. Maybe he's I demand answers. To say. Demand answers. <laughs> oh, this might be the room, actually. Terry. Yes. Uh, this machine, my machine, is going to be used for Gregory. Gregory's oh. breakout. Okay. Perfect. So I'm going to throw you in there. Oh, here's Andy calling me right okay. now. So and just one is, moment. And, all right.
Uh, Robert, are you able to hear me? Oh, someone hears me. Hi, Robert. Can you hear me okay? You're muted, so if you're talking, I can't hear you. Yeah, because in that smaller room, you don't need the speakers up there. He has one. Okay. Hi, Robert. So I understand your computer is going into uh, Greg Gregory's room, right? Um, Anders, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna sit down on this session, but I'm just gonna go to the wall the back and just check in, and then I'll come back. So I just just see him. Okay, well, we can hold on, yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, and uh, Andy can run my machine at the meeting call. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'd love to sit in this one as well, but. Do you have uh, enough to make it worthwhile? The meet are there people showing up for the meeting? Oh yeah, there's two on site. Oh, there might be some other folks. Okay. We're just getting we're just not hooked up yet. We're getting a laptop. I said, well, we'll get going. Okay. Hello, Island Reach, which I believe is Brooks. Hi there. Hey, All I believe right. you're trying to go into the role of art, correct? Correct. Perfect. Let me put you right there. Thank We're God. Just trying to get all set up. Thank God we found you're here. Okay, I think <laughs> I've been hearing that a lot today. Yeah. I feel like I feel like this mysterious presence over the meeting. Yeah, you're you're all, you're a spiritual thing <laughs> floating through the year. I love it. Um, you should see an invite to join the role of art. So Gregory Hammond or something. Art funny. Not Yes, and this group right here, I have it set um, that you should be able to join Gregory's room, but somebody on your end needs to click the button to join the room. So there Sorry. should be an invite. There should be an invite somewhere on your screen um, to join a breakout room. There's nothing here. Okay, I'm going to move you back. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Move to, I'm going to move you somewhere real quick and then move you back. Okay. Move to, uh, it is seeking common ground there.
Hi, hi, John. Didn't even need my help. I was partway through sending the invite and you just popped right up on my screen. <clears throat> I think we're getting the hang of it. Um, if you want to tell me which uh, room you'd like to go to, I can assign you. You're muted, John. Did you want me to copy and paste the descriptions for you? Hi, Paul. My name is Terry, and I am Zoom support. Oh, you're not Paul. You're Bob. Here I am putting on my nice voice. Now I'm going to go back to what do you need? <laughs> you're muted, though. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Um, your volume is the phone. <laughs> testing, testing. Yeah, just hang on a sec. Is this? Yeah, that's the volume. And then oh, I see. That's it. Oh, God. Yeah, you're the master. Okay. I wouldn't say that, man. You still have to. <laughs> hey, Terry. Um, yes. We're the uh, media breakout. Perfect. Okay, so I don't know if there's anybody waiting to join. There isn't anybody waiting to join, but I'm happy to put you in there. Okay. And then if people want to join, because they'll likely want to join in the second session, yeah. there's at All least right. a device set up. So we've got four people in the room. We're going to get underway. And so I'm going to join this breakout, which is now our meeting room. Is that right? That's right. Okay. Yeah. And go ahead and bring anybody else in that wants to come. Perfect. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> 